Now we want to look at how we would create a similar thing like we saw earlier for Android. We want to now see how we are going to create that for iOS. Now creating or implementing a plugin uh, for iOS or in Objective-C uh, requires two things, uh, like we've seen already. Uh, one is the class, so an Objective-C class. And then secondly, we have the JavaScript wrapper. Okay, so we need to create an Objective-C class for the plugin. Uh, in doing this, we need to import a particular header file, which is the Cordova uh, CDV header file, uh, the CDV header file. And then we need to inherit the CDV plugin class. So after doing that, we then need to add a property for the callback ID. So uh, almost following similar to what we do in Android, but a bit different yeah, because of the language syntax. And then finally, we need to declare the method signature for that plugin. So the code snippet here is showing us that uh, the import statement is pulling into our working environment, the header file cdv.h, uh, the interface, hello world, that's the name of our class. And you can see that it's extending or inheriting the cdv plugin class. Then finally, we are now given the signature of that plugin. So we have a say hello, uh, and that would be the signature. Now, the say hello method takes one argument. Uh, so that say hello is taking one argument. And then uh, the command contains references to all the parameters of the invocation. So the command that we have here, uh, cdv invoke URL command, yes, so that is containing all references to the parameters of the invocation. Then the result is returned to the callback function of the calling JavaScript object. So this is some code snippets telling us how that could also be done. And during the lab sessions, you can work extensively on this. You can try your hands on this. Okay. Now we want to look at how we would create uh, the JavaScript wrapper. So we've now seen how we would create the plugin um, in Java. And then we've also seen how to create that in Objective-C or for the iOS. Okay. So in implementing the wrapper, uh, what we need to do is to have a JavaScript file. Okay. Now in the JavaScript file, we need to make some declarations. Uh, and here we can see for our Hello World plugin that we are creating, we are now having the say hello method uh, function being implemented here. So we are going to do something similar like this for your class. And if you are familiar with JavaScript, you should be able to understand the syntax of uh, all of this and be able to follow suit. Okay. Now, after you are done with that, you would want to now use the plugin in your application. So then you would need to invoke the plugin from JavaScript. So we invoke the plugin, or you can invoke the plugin by using the uh, Apache Cordova uh, uh, objects here we have the window dot plugins then the plugin function name followed by the plugin method name then you pass the parameters okay so an example here we are calling our say hello we have the windows dot plugin and then we have the name of the plugin which is hello world plugin and then the function we want to call out of that, or the method we want to call out of that, which is the say hello method. Then we have the say hello on success. We have the say hello on failure. And then we pass in the last parameter, okay, which is going to be the argument that will be sent to our native code. Okay. So on success, that callback that we talked about in our Java code or the Objective-C code is now going to call the on success callback, and then an alert in our case is going to be shown. And on failure, an alert is also going to be shown, indicating that there has been some failure. Okay. So if we, are, we go ahead to execute this code that we have seen, even though it's in bits, but majority of what we need to write is what we showcased. If we go ahead to run that application, this is what we are going to see. So we're going to see an alert, which is native, uh, to the iOS, 
and, and then this is how it would look like. So the application is taking your name and then uh, producing a native alert. And then for the Android also, we are seeing a similar thing. We are actually achieving the same thing across several platforms. That's the beauty of uh, the Cordova or the work light. Okay. Um, we now want to talk about the WebView overlay plugin. So what is that actually? Okay. So many a times we have uh, many enterprises deciding to develop their own custom or employee mobile applications. So you have huge uh, mobile applications now coming uh, up now and we get to download most of these uh, applications on our phone. The banks now have a lot of mobile applications that are running on phones. And at some point, uh, there's some, uh, something they need to agree on. So now, they might have websites or web applications already. And they, in building the mobile application, they now have to think whether they build everything from scratch onto the mobile end, or at some point in time, try to interface with this web application. So the web view overlay provides us with the mechanism to be able to, at some point in our application, interface with an existing path on the web, be it on the web. We are able to now pull that into our mobile application. So we have the interface of that showing up in our mobile application. Now that application can consist of two parts, uh, one which is not dependent, solely dependent on that web application which already exists, and some portion of it which is just going to fetch the uh, data or the display from the web application and showcase that. So we can add parts of that also. We would we'll see that. Um, okay, so what, what we are seeing here right now on the slide is an application which makes use of the web view overlay. Okay, so now this has uh, different tabs and some tab is making use of the web view overlay whilst the other ones are strictly native, okay. So in this particular example, uh, the application that we are looking at, uh, the user interface is displaying three tabs. Now, two of these tabs contain internal content. That means that those ones are uh, just for the mobile application. And then we have the third tab, which is showing an external. In this case, uh, it's an IBM mobile website. So you can see that the first page is implemented in HTML and bundled with the mobile application. So you have all the code there residing locally on your phone. And the next tab or the third tab is pulling its source directly from the web. So the third tab looks exactly like another application page. And that's the beauty of the web view overlay. You get it to look like it's actually part of the mobile application, but in the background, the content is being picked from online or from a different source. So it's, it's a web view, is a web view that we are using in conjunction with the other contents, okay. Now, how do we implement the web view overlay? Now, it's implemented with the Apache Cordova plugin functionality. So we've seen the Apache Cordova plugin, and this is implemented using that functionality. Now, you can create your own protocol between internal web components and the web view overlay control. So in the next slides, we are going to look at how to create this plugin. Now, the first thing you need to do is declare a web view object to display the external content. So here, this code snippet is actually given as that. So just like we saw for creating a plugin, you already know that we always need to have uh, some native code. In this case, we are looking at Android, and so we we'll need to have a Java code. Now, this Java code needs to extend the WL Droid gap so we have our web view overlay app. That's the name of our web view overlay application that we are creating. And we are making use of the web view, which is a native uh, functionality to the Android. So we are making use of that. And then we have our activity and everything set up. 
Then we continue to uh, do some initializations and set some properties. So here we can see we are setting its visibility, uh, we are setting its client, the web view client, and then we are doing some layouts just like you would do when you write your uh, Android application or you build your Android application. Then we continue to set up content view for the web view overlay. Uh, and in doing that, you need to follow some steps. The first one is you need to create a relative layout. So if you are uh, an active Android developer, you would know what these layouts are, and especially the relative layout. So we need to create that one, and then we'll remove the root instance from its original parent. Then we add the root and the web view overlay to the root uh, relative layout. And finally, we need to set the content view to the root relative layout. So this uh, code snippet is actually telling how all of that could be done. Uh, you could just import this into your version when you decide to build a web view overlay. It's uh, straightforward. You can easily follow. Then we we'll need to implement the Java code for the Cordova plugin. So we need to declare actions like we saw in creating uh, your own plugin, you need to declare actions for that and then support these actions. Then just like we did, you will need to uh, implement the execute function and then from there, processing is just like you would do for your own uh, plugin. Then finally, you will need to uh, build the wrapper around that class. So here we need to implement that in JavaScript, and we can see from uh, this code snippet how that could be achieved. It's similar to what we did uh, where we're building our own plugin. And these are some uh, help functions that would help us tell which the tab was clicked, and from there we are able to now show our web view overlay. So we'll do that by calling on the open web view overlay. And then when the user clicks on a different tab, they are navigating away from the web view overlay, we would want to close that web view overlay. Okay. Now in order to implement the web view overlay technique on the Android platform, the following changes are required to the Cordova code. In the droidgap.java file, the root element must be the relative layout and not linear layout. So we saw that when we were writing our web view overlay Java code that we needed to set them to the relative layout. It's very important you need that. And in the linear layout, uh, soft keyboard detects the Java file also. The class should extend the relative layout instead of the linear layout. So we want to work with relative layout and not the linear layout. Okay. So you need to do that also. And then you make sure to use a Worklight certified Cordova version when applying these changes. So uh, Cordova versions are actually tested so that they actually can complement the Worklight framework. So you need to make sure that that version that you are using is certified. Okay. Then finally, when this is run, the results, just as is shown on the screen, is displayed. And it's seamless. Uh, the user hardly notices that they are using a different functionality. It just looks like it was an uh, uh, inbuilt thing. OK, so this brings us to the end of this section. We've looked at Apache Cordova. We've looked at some of the functionalities we can pull out of that. We've also seen how to create our own plugin using the functionality provided by Apache Cordova. And finally, we've seen how to integrate an external source or external uh, code, should I say, from maybe a web application into our mobile application. Thank you, and see you in the next slide.